Jason is with us in Oklahoma. Hi, Jason. Welcome to the show. How can I help? Hey, Dave. Thank you for having me. Sure. What's up? Um, I'm having a hard time uh, wrapping my mind around the value of money in the stock market, um, especially in today's environment. And so uh, it just seems like the price of, of the price of a lot of stocks is completely irrelevant to the company's earnings. Um, I and so my question is if my money is more effective in real estate uh, than it is in the stock market. Since if I if I buy a rental property, for example, it actually generates cash, whereas the only value that you get from a um, from a stock is whenever you you sell it. And if somebody wants that particular certificate of stock. Well, or if you buy a dividend-paying stock, which I don't buy single yeah, stocks yeah, anyway, but we can discuss the philosophy or the concepts behind it. Uh, generally speaking, generally speaking, you would make a lot if you do a good job with it. You would make a lot more rate of return on real estate, uh, yeah. but it involves more hassle, more of your time. Uh, even if you hire a management company or whatever, you've still got more time than just buying a mutual fund and throwing it in the drawer and forget it, okay? And you get the statements uh, on your email, you know, once a quarter, once a month, or whatever. Uh, You have zero hassle factor buying a mutual fund or buying stocks, unless you're going to try to buy and sell them, which I would never recommend. But a buy and hold strategy on real estate, while it generates cash flow, uh, it should outperform stocks, but it has more hassle. It outperforms mainly because it's an imperfect market in terms of, uh, that's an economic term you may be familiar with. A perfect market is one where all buyers and sellers have exactly the same information and the exact same access to buy. And so the stock market is closer to a perfect market than real estate. Real estate, each item is unique. It's unique to a certain area. And all buyers and sellers never have even close to the same amount of information or belief about a piece of real estate. Uh, And so real estate gives you a lot more opportunity to get a bargain, in other words. And um, and if you're willing to invest the time, you should make more on it. Real estate creates three types of return. Uh, One is, as you said, increase in value and cash flow is two, which is the rental income on it. And three is you get to depreciate it. So you actually get a, a tax break that covers a portion or all of your uh, rent that comes in, and that actually has a cash value to it. So when you put those three together, that's called an internal rate of return. Have you ever heard that? Yes. Okay. So an IRR on a piece of uh, a, a piece of real estate that is under uh, under a million dollars, uh, a piece a small apartment, a small uh, uh, you know, a basic home, a, a small office or something like that, your, uh, your IRRs ought to be north of 15%. Mine are okay. on, my, on most everything I own that's income producing. Um, and your cash on cash in most cases with a typical piece of real investment property would be 8 to 12% somewhere in there. Your cash on cash alone would be that. Now, uh, again, on stocks, you got two possible places of return. One is the increase in value, and two is the um, uh, and, and uh, two is possible dividend payouts, which are profits uh, shared with the owners of the company. And when you're a stockholder, you're an owner of the company, so you could get uh, dividend payout stocks, and you'd have a you'd have a cash flow with that kind of a thing, and you'd have the increases in value. So, in both markets, though. People make the statements that you were making that it's artificially high or it's ridiculous or there's a bubble or there's no way that that supports that. When in reality, there's a few times that that's the case. Uh, We had a tech bubble in 1999, the the dot-com rage where people were uh, buying stocks on companies that had never made a profit. So that was ridiculous, obviously, and they shot through the roof. Most of those didn't survive a few Uh, name brands that are household names did survive, like for instance, Amazon. Uh, And so, uh, but but by and large, the stock market overall is never overpriced over the scope of time. There may be a moment in time that it is, um, or there may be a moment in time that it's underpriced. Uh, I'll give you an example. You remember the oil glut 
uh, because the ships were all parked off the shores because nobody was driving, and oil went down to zero dollar a barrel or sub zero a barrel uh, ab- about five weeks ago. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so that drove Exxon's stock way down. It was artificially right. low because it was a temporary situation. So the numbers didn't justify how low it was. Other times, something right. hypes up and the numbers are artificially high. But over the scope of time, they generally correct back and forth. And, you know, you can look at P.E. ratios, profit to earnings ratios, and you can look at the book value of the company, the assets that they own, and compare that to the stock prices and the outstanding shares. And, you know, most of this stuff's pretty close. Uh, so okay. to say that the Dow's at 30000 and it just cannot maintain, why? Because you emotionally can't accept it? Uh, when the math is actually there, that's absurd. So that's like saying, you know, this piece of real estate is never worth this. Well, the rents coming in off of it actually say it is worth that. Uh, And so, you know, I'm looking at a a cap rate on my NOI, my net operating income on this piece of real estate says it is worth that. And so, um, and seven people right around that have just paid similar prices for that. So, yeah, it is probably worth that. Just because, you know, when I was a boy, that piece of property sold for – you know, a hundred times less does not mean that it's not worth that today just because I can't emotionally keep up with the prices. There's math on all of it. Now, again, there's there's examples of individual companies on stocks or individual pieces of real estate where they are overpriced or where they are underpriced. But by and large, you have a better chance of sneaking up on a deal with a piece of real estate. I like real estate. I've got a bunch of it. Does that, does that help at all? Okay. Yeah, it does. It's, I mean, in, especially in today's environment, it just the stock market personally just seems like a giant casino. I mean, in some in some instances. In what way? Because, in what way? Well, it, it, similar to the um, to the to the example of Exxon Mobil, I haven't checked what their what their dividend mm-hmm. pays, um, but you know, the the stock was was artificially undervalued. But if you know, if at the time, whenever it was supposedly correctly valued if i purchased shares of exxon mobil um i don't get a portion of their earnings with the exception of the the amount of dividends that they pay I agree um the only way that you you are bet you are betting means- that apple mcdonald's coca-cola home depot are going to be worth right. more five years from now than they are today and why would you make that bet Well, you would look at their track record of growth, the stock price growth, and you would look at the management team, and you'd look at the profit margins, and you would also kind of project into the future what you think the business climate is that they're going to exist in. Right. And so it's not a casino. A casino is is truly a game of chance. You have nothing to analyze there except dice are going to turn up or cards are going to turn up. Right. It, It just seems like the stock price, though, isn't tied to that. It, realistically at all the only way that it's going to go the stock price is going to go up in value is if somebody else wants to buy it for more than i paid for it well you know no if mean? the company continues to grow profits and continues to grow in size then the stock price would go up in value let's just let's take home but depot let's just p- pick out home depot i don't even know what their stock does because i don't follow single stocks i'm just using an example okay but let's just say with home depot okay. let's say that why would their stock price grow well let's say they open another 500 stores and all those stores make a profit right. more, and they have 500 more profitable stores than they did have. Uh, or, or Coca-Cola opens up some new lines of product and continues to grow. So as long as these companies are diversifying and growing and adding profits to their bottom line, the stock is going to continue to be worth more. I think you could probably make the case that Apple has done a really good job with that. It's almost an iconic stock. It's kind of ridiculous, actually. But... Um, you know, and I don't play single stocks for this reason, but I do buy them as a group in mutual funds as part of my portfolio. And no, it's not a casino. It's really not. Uh, there's a lot of things you can look at there that give you a feel for it.